Well, in my view, you've been paying far too much for your energy bills for the last 20 years. Yes, you've been subsidising the onshore and offshore wind energy industry. And now, of course, there are great demands for cleaner waters and fewer sewage discharges into our rivers and seas, all of which I totally agree with, but guess who is going to be picking up the bill? Well, a report out recently suggests that actually there's another big levy going on your bills, and this would be to do with hydrogen. Well, Jack Richardson is head of energy and climate at the think tank onward. Hydrogen, Jack, as I understand hydrogen, it doesn't have the density to be useful in applications like, for example, cars or tractors. And for home use, it's highly explosive. Well, first of all, thanks very much for, for having me on. I'll, uh, I'll start. So, so last year, um, the government uh, reacted to the Russian invasion of Ukraine by basically saying we need to produce a lot more energy in the UK. Part of that was um, having a new 10 gigawatts of hydrogen production by 2030. Hydrogen is actually quite useful for a lot of things, yeah. including energy security. It can uh, help us get the most out of renewables. So instead of paying wind farms to switch off, they produce hydrogen, which so can be used. This the is gas. the idea: is that the, these vast arrays of offshore wind farms in the North Sea will send their electricity in and will use that to convert into hydrogen. Yes, I mean, it can use that as a, as a gas and it won't replace uh, fossil fuel gas in, in all applications, but it can definitely be helpful in uh, making our energy system more resilient so we can burn that hydrogen later for power. Mm. Um, we could use it in our industry to make our industry a bit more competitive, especially in markets that are placing a premium on greenness. Um, and then also it can help us to to displace some of the uh, the foreign imports of gas from, from countries and like so Qatar and America. And so therefore it's part of our net, the government's net zero agenda? It is, but it's also part of our energy security agenda, okay. a small part of both. Um, but what we said in our report is that the government wants to pay for this, uh, this 10 gigawatts of hydrogen production by 2030, mm. through a new uh, policy levy on bills. Now, what we're saying is, we estimated that would cost about £118 per year from 2030. So, let's just slow down. Mm. That's it. Sure. 118 pounds a year on every one of your household yeah. bills. Hang on, Jack Richardson. Despite my scepticism about some of its uses, if it's got uses in industry, why have any subsidy at all? So it's a new industry, and the government wants to, to ramp it up very fast, and it wants to secure energy supplies and have new sources of domestic energy production. I think that's right, and I think we do definitely need hydrogen. But what we're saying is households won't be using it for, for reasons, like yeah. you said earlier. Yeah. It's just not, it's not very economical to use as home heating. You can't have a like-for-like -like replacement for fossil fuel gas. It's potentially quite dangerous. But I think it can definitely be used for, for things like uh, industrial decarbonisation. Okay. Heavy industry do really want that hydrogen um, because it can help them avoid carbon pricing. Now, I think it is right that our industry um, pays for its pollution. I think well, that's... I think that. households have been burdened too much already and this idea that ordinary, struggling folk in many cases should be handing money over to rich corporations <laughs> and their shareholders, I, I find totally and utterly... Objectionable, but the government set on this course, is it? Yeah, and I, again, I, I do think it's right that we have this 10 gigawatts of hydrogen production target. Okay. Um, hydrogen is is very useful for a lot of things. I don't think home heating is one of them. But what we've said in the report is, uh, instead of charging households, essentially, if I actually may, if, if I may rewind, is the government set this target, but the treasury doesn't want to pay for it. Therefore, it's going to put it on en everyone's energy bills, no matter how rich or how poor you are. You all pay the same rate, depending on how much energy you consume, yeah. basically. Actually, poorer people um, tend to consume more energy because they're less likely to be able to upgrade their home and make their, their homes more energy efficient. So fewer poor people will be well, paying a levy and then also using more energy. I mean, recent reports suggesting that for the average, you know, semi-detached house to come up, you know, perhaps built in the 30s or whatever it may be, uh, to come up to speed where the government wants people to be could cost up to £15,000 per household. I mean, much of this is totally unrealistic, isn't it? Well, some of them, but there's also some households which only spend, only spend less than a grand or something. I think the best way to help people help themselves uh, to upgrade their homes, which is a good thing, it means that they'll use less energy, have lower energy bills, be warmer, is through tax breaks, essentially. Uh, so maybe a bit like there's a cycle-to-work scheme where you can pay monthly out of your pay packet, uh, tax-free, and finance it over a certain period of time. Maybe we can do that for home at grades too. But I think the, the important thing why I've come on today yeah. is to say that uh, household bills are not the place to be paying no, no, for and I get that point because, because the beneficiaries won't be households anyway. Yeah. It will be heavy industry Precisely. that will use it. And I get the logic of that absolutely and completely. Final thought, net zero is not achievable anyway, is it?
No, I disagree. I think it is. And I think uh, Britain has a lot going for it. And I think we can reindustrialise the country if we do it right. Well, but I think the hydrogen well, levy well, is, a, is, a, far, is an example of it doing wrong. Thus far, the pursuit of net zero is deindustrializing Britain as all these manufacturers head off to India and China because they couldn't give a damn about net zero. So I'm not sure there isn't actually, uh, there's lots of things, lots of reasons why we've lost our industry over the decades. I don't think, uh, I don't prices, think, I don't think, part energy, of it. I do think electricity prices, I do think you're right there and we do need to get our electricity yeah. prices down. Part of that is moving away from a system that's so dominated by the gas price, which we can't control. Um, so I think instead what we need to do is well, cut electricity prices. If we produced moving. our own gas, we could have much cheaper energy. Just look at America. Mm. But it's very difficult, actually, to replicate the shale revolution outside of America. China's also been trying to do it, but it hasn't succeeded. There are countries like Poland and Romania that also tried to do a lot of shale. It didn't succeed. I think that's a, a debate that we've had, and we need to put it to one side. We're running out of oil and gas in the North Sea as well, so if we want to have domestic energy production, really the only way to do it now is through renewables and nuclear power. Jack Richardson, I take the point, if we're going to go for hydrogen... The punters at home shouldn't be forced to pay yet again. I'm somewhat more sceptical than you about the <laughs> zero agenda, because 